Is it everything you dreamed of? She wanted the DeWalt one. size we've had obviously had to shorten it to account for the height of the doorway in the building this is a normal framed legend brace door really simple and pretty cost effective i'm actually going to revamp this one a little bit by insulating the voids and probably putting a skin of plywood over the inside that'll just help with noise and insulation but for now it's a good way of getting it cut and from looking at various different doors and the ways that they're constructed this one appeared to be the best way to go that would allow me to take off quite a bit. Otherwise I would be making my own, which I should have done, but you'll have to forgive me. Now some of you may remember I made a couple of garden gates, which are just behind me outside here on the, on the path. They were about two years ago, I think I made those, and I did the bracing exactly how you see on this door of purchase. I guess properly to do it, you'd have the braces go both rising from the hinge side. So to keep all of you happy, that's what I'm going to do with this one. I'm going to pry the other one off, flip it and put it in. Right, door surgery done. Hopefully that'll keep some of you happy. So let's get some hinges in. Now I've hung plenty of doors in previous videos, but just in case you haven't seen any of those or you wanna know what I'm up to here, I'll talk you through the process. I'm using my hinge there and measuring up nine inches from the bottom of the door and six inches down from the top of the door and then centering my middle hinge. That's kind of the traditional layout, I would say. Uh, and that's all to do with how you see the position of the hinges from an eye level. Then I'm using a sharp pencil or a Stanley knife blade to mark out that edge of where the hinge was and then just cutting in with a sharp chisel there to give us the border. Next thing I did is took a hinge and set the bit in my router to the thickness of one of the leaves of the hinge and then I could just take out the meat of it. That gives you a nice even depth. Then you can tidy it up with the chisel and get it ready for the hinge. Now, there's loads of ways to do this. You can do it with a hammer and chisel, and that's just fine, and you can also use a jig and a bigger router and be fancy like that. But for the amount of doors I do, and for the speed I need to work, this is a good compromise and gets the job done nicely and fairly efficiently. The next thing I did is then made up a story stick. That's a good way of transferring our hinge positions from the door to the door lining or to the door frame. I've made sure it's just slightly above the door and that gives us our clearance once it's fitted and then I can then transfer it onto the door lining and we'll then be able to mark up our hinge positions. Now I can't really get the router in here so I just did this with a hammer and chisel. 
I'm sure I could have made up a jig to allow for that door frame, but it's just as easy when there's only three to do. Hammer and chisel is fine. I've then used this self-centering bit in my drill just to mark up and drill those holes. And I've only put a couple of screws in each there just in case there's any fine tuning we need to do. Well, folks we still got some stuff to do but the workshop has power it's got lighting so there's no excuses now we need to move in definitely a bad idea folks is why we wait until we've got some help <sighs> could have been worse fair play record power the knob on top and the guard that sits over whatever that bit is wouldn't have cleared but they happen to be loose so it does just fit under a standard doorway and that's a lower than a standard doorway to be fair oh we've got a big machine in now now the difference is now that we're in here it is the very reason why i bought a wheel kit a year or so ago when I bought this machine because I knew I was going to have a smooth floor in here and I wanted to move it around as I was going to use it. Oh. Well I managed to struggle in the workbench you won't see that because the world's worst GoPro the GoPro Hero 9 has once again screwed up. Anyway, I also screwed up because there was a screw in the back of that workbench, which I didn't know. So as I moved it in, slid it across the floor, we gouged the entrance to our new workshop, but never mind. It's actually only a temporary measure. This is the old workshop um, workbench that I found when we moved in here. It was in the corner of the garage. I replaced the bottom with some fence posts and floorboards. It's okay, it's a hardwood top, it's got a vice, but in all reality, it's a bit wobbly, it's a bit old and knackered, but we'll work with it for now, because we've got more important things to do, like build storage. The new mitosaur is here. The box remains unopened. You won't let me put you down, will you? I promise you can have the box when I'm finished. There we are. We'll start opening it up, shall we? This is definitely going to be a good den, hey? The kitchen is where we always end up unboxing tools and I'll probably get to hold off for that. 
But we'll tidy up afterwards, won't we? What's in the box? She wanted the DeWalt one. Oh, look in there. <gasps> You have a biscuit, daddy gets some ice still. Oh yes, he's out. Boy, that's heavy. Is it everything you dreamed of? What's out of the box? We found the lock. Oh man, look at that. Just, just beautiful. Ah, that's the one. Oh, yeah. You can see how they are stopping at that point. That can be up tight against the wall. Our beams and our kind of posts come up to there. So basically our worktop is going to need to be the depth of there to here. It's easy enough, isn't it? I've realised that 600, maybe 650 is about right for this mitosaur. Now, the reason I can go a little bit shorter or shallower than previously is just the, the way that this saw articulates. So you can see it there, it doesn't have the, the bars out the back, those rails. So that is uh, the main reason, actually, well, one of the main reasons I went for this saw. Anyway, more on that in the future and we'll set up a bit of a mitre station there and we'll recess it down into a well so the, the table either side is at the right height for the bed of the saw. Anyway, if you want to follow along in a little bit more detail and more updates, you can head over to Instagram, follow us there, and also on our Facebook page. And of course, as always, a massive thank you to our patrons over on Patreon. They've seen a lot of this already because they always get the sneak peek. But uh, if you want to support the channel, that is a great way to do so. But that's it. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. And we'll see you next time.